now let's explore a range view in a bit more detail and look at some editing skills for arranging our songs and moving everything around. So this was from our previous lesson where we looked at using clips to create a short arrangement, then record it into this view. Now, once we've got it in there, what we can do is we can press play and we can have things drop in and out along a timeline. So this is the timeline along the bottom. and This is the bars along the top. We can zoom in by um, using plus and minus. You can also, if you're on a Mac, use your trackpad. The shortcut I quite like is if you select a section here and press Z, you need to make sure your QWERTY keyboard's turned off. Press Z, it zooms in. So this is quite cool. So now what we can do is we can go and take chunks of the audio out. So say, for example, here, I didn't want this section here. I can simply highlight it, press delete, and gets rid of it. Now, if you're like, oh God, I didn't mean to do that. You can simply click and drag. It brings it back here. It doesn't really delete it. It just kind of takes that chunk out, tucks it away, it like rolls it under the carpet. <laughs> Imagine like carpet, you roll it away and then you can unroll it again. Now, so that you just wanted this section here, you can press Command E or Control E on Windows. Take that section out. Same thing again, you can unroll it like that. Now, say if we wanted to move all this and duplicate it, we can highlight everything and then just press Command D or Control D, it duplicates it. You see how we could make an arrangement quite quickly by taking Command E and Delete and Control or, and Command D. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this video. If you've gotten to this point, firstly, thank you so much for watching this far. Secondly, if you could give us a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, it really does help us out. If you're the sort of person who's watched this far, it means you generally care about all things Ableton Live. So maybe consider subscribing to our channel, turning on all the notifications. There'll be loads more useful videos just like this coming real soon. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let's get back to the video. Next thing is time-based shortcuts, which is really good. So like I wanted to delete just this section, I can press Command Shift Delete or Control Shift Delete on Windows. It takes out that and it moves everything back. Command Z to undo. Now say if I want this section, but I want it over here, I can press Command C and then click at the top track and press Command Shift V, which paste time. So when I say paste or copy time, that means basically you're shifting everything along. You're not copying over something that's already there. Whereas if I did that same thing I did there but without the Shift Command V, See, so it just pastes over that, that there did not shift along. So they're super useful tools for arranging. The next thing we can look at is automation, which automation is the way to automate things over a time-based period. So that can be the most obvious one, which is volume. So something can get louder and quieter at a certain point in the song without me having to manually turn the volume up and down. So how do we do this? So first thing we need to make sure this little dial is turned off because the shortcut to get automation is A. If that's turned on, no, nothing's happening. Turn it off, now we're talking. So this hides, this shows and hides our automation. So for example here, let's look at this last section here and let's do a classic fade out. So what I'm gonna do is by default, it's set to track volume and I'm just going to, and I'm gonna select this, one of the tracks here, so that's already turned down. Now this one here, see it's got mixer, it's got delay. So I'm gonna to go to mixer, track track volume, turn that one down. Now if I click from here, click on the playhead. What have, whatever happened to the classic fade out? I think it was a very 90s thing, wasn't it? But that's how you would do it. Here's all the different sections you can automate. So if you had audio effects, they would come up here. So mixer basically means the track. Then these are all the things you can automate on the track. So you could have like the reverb here. We could get it get really reverby. We could also get the delay as well. Put that same point going crazy, maybe even sooner. Crazy. Okay, so experiment with that. Hey, hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to dive deeper into the world of Ableton Live, why not check out my full Ableton Live course? We'll not only cover all the awesome things Ableton Live can do, we'll look at writing and producing a track from scratch, then we'll look at how we record vocals, then mix it and master it, ready for release. So if that's the sort of thing you're interested in, click the links below. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let's get back to the video. The next thing that's amazing is the MPE capabilities. Now this is something that's not new again to Ableton Live, but they've made it a lot more accessible within light and 
intro. So how they've done that is bring in the drift synth again. So here we go. Let's just drag drift into here. Now, if you look there as various modulation points on the synth, so here, one here, and we've also got a mod page here. Now, if you look within this one here, you can see something that says slide, pressure, velocity, all this other stuff. So slide and pressure are two of the MPE parameters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the note expression page. Then I have my slide and pressure automation, my lanes here, and then also directly on the notes, I have the note slide. So I can, I can get my notes to manually slide down. Now the difference between automation and MPE is it's like basically polyphonic automation. You've got it for each single note of the chord. So for example, here, if I do this pitch, that's only gonna happen on that one note. If I want it to happen on this note, I'd have to go in individually and do it like that. So whereas automation, if I did something, maybe this like that, now I have an automation there just for that one note. And then I can click here. Maybe I have a different slide, go like that. Now, if I go back into the synth here, I've got slide, which is on the, the shape here. I can put that up to 100%. Crazy stuff. So you see there, I can go in and change it straight away. Now this works fantastically, obviously with MPE capable controllers as well, such as Ableton's new Push 3, which features all these parameters on their new pads.